webinar. It says webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. I think we're live. Welcome to Cash Call. Welcome, good everybody. Night. Yeah. Well, good to see you again, Brian. Thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, it's always good to, good to hang out with you, Dal. It's all, you know, I feel like we get a lot of positive stuff done and some great energy going on. So yeah. go ahead. I'll let you kind of introduce what we're going to talk about today. How about you introduce us for those people who don't know who we are? Because I always do the introduction. Awesome. My, uh, my name is Brian Curtis, and uh, I run a, a small brokerage in Northwest Arkansas, as well as uh, I'm a real estate coach with Club Wealth Real Estate Coaching and Consulting. And uh, Dale runs a, a – this is my co-host, Dale Archdeacon, and he runs a ISA coaching and training team and sales training company. So if you have somebody out there who you're not quite sure, you know, how to move forward, Dale's a great guy to get your team moving forward, to get your ISAs moving forward. It's a, it's a great opportunity for, so uh, that's, that's my pitch for the day. I don't know. I wasn't expecting a pitch, but it just happens without even trying, I guess. Love it. I love the pitch, man. That's when you're a true salesman, you are going to pitch at any time, right? I can't, like kids. I can't help. Kids, you want to go to bed by 930, right? I mean, come on. You want healthy skin and you want to feel better. Let's go to bed at 930, huh? Yeah. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? You got to have a little trial close at the end. So exactly. anyway, <laughs> with that in mind, you know, today we're going to be talking about some, some, what I would argue a lot of people, the most profitable thing that they could do in their business today, if you've got a database, is learning how to organize it, learning how to follow up through it, and just using it to the absolute maximum of its capacity. You know, databases have been a thing for years and years and years and years. And I want to say in the last probably 10 years in real estate is where you start to see a bunch of these CRMs pop up. You know, if you look like back in 07 there was tiger leads and they had a crm and then you start thinking things like commissions inc and boomtown and uh, i use follow-up boss there's lion desk there's wise high or wise eight there's so many things out there we're not going to go into today which one's the best and which one you should use and by the way i'm not even sure there is a best one for each specific <laughs> person but no, nobody's allowed to ask that question right no question in the comments as to what is the best crm Right. You know, and Tristan said this once. He said, I don't even believe this is the best CRM is the one that you use. I still am kind of in that camp a little bit. If you found a good way to use something and a system to, to, to use it, then use it. Because honestly, that I'll put you ahead of 95% of the people today. But, yeah. you know, we're just going to talk about, you know, what do I do with all this data? It, each and every one of us is out there buying leads, whether we're buying pay-per-click, whether we're buying Facebook, you know, Zillow, Truly, or Realtor.com, and I don't want to go into what's going on with that right now. But nonetheless, you know, I can tell you that my database has 42,000 people in it. Wow. And if there's one that's thing, a, if I can do- That's a huge wait, database, Brian. You got a lot. A huge, but here's the biggest problem, and we'll talk about this later today. I wish I could wave a magic wand and get that thing cleaned up. Now, we're in the process of it. We will talk about that. But, that you know- is, That's we, called, you know what that is? That's an army- of virtual assistance in, <laughs> in a foreign country. That's what that is. Absolutely. And, you know, we're doing some things, you know, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you a start where we're, we're starting with that. So we've got uh, 20 agents who basically all have about 200 leads assigned to them. And then I got a gigantic pond. And ultimately the pond is where we're cleaning up and we're doing it two ways. Um, the first thing that we're doing to clean up the pond is I hired an ISA and basically I've got an ISA calling through every single lead, updating notes, updating information. So I'd like to tell you that you can just do this in an hour and wave a wand and it'll be done. But here's the thing, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the majority of the people on this call do not have a 40,000 person database. They don't need yeah. to necessarily go out and hire somebody Most to of them not go through that. So, you know, but what if you, you know got 5,000? Go ahead. Yeah, Brian. So what you do need to talk about, you know, if you're, if you're baller tastic like Brian and you have 42,000 people in your database, then you need to talk about ISAs, right? But so for most of these people, Brian, you know what happens, right? You could just be an agent on a team and you get really busy. You're closing business. You're running around with your hair on fire, right? And then you come back and you're like, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to get down to this database and it's a shit show. And you just have, you haven't been in there forever. You don't know what's what, or what is a good lead. What's not, not a good lead. Your tags, you haven't really tagged people. It's a mess. So Brian, take that. That's one of your agents. How would you fix that database for them? So step one, let's just assume you have a pretty big one. Let's assume you got 500 people, which by the way is a good size database in, in real estate. So let's take 500 people. You know, uh, the famous story is how do you, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. Yeah. So if I had 500 people, I would literally sort them 50 people a day. 
And how am I going to sort them? Let's, let's just pick a simplistic way. For me, it's I'm going to sort by last login. I'm going to create a list. And ultimately, I'm going to break that list down into 10, 50 people lists. Because 50 people, no one feels overwhelmed by 50. Well, I don't say no one. Majority of people, if they say, I've got you get 50 people and I want you to go through this 50 people and make it better, then great. So for me, I also don't want you to go through 50 people a day and try and fix them. Let's pick and make sure at least once in, in a week after, so basically put together a plan. If you got 500 people you got to go through, Pick five weeks and 100 people a week, let's go through and make sure that we're doing it. How do we do it? Well, I log in, I look at that person and I categorize them. Here's the part that a lot of people aren't gonna wanna do. I'm gonna probably have to call them, text them, email them. <laughs> wait, it's wait, the wait, hold on a second. You said reach out to them, right? Absolutely. Just start, so, start reaching yeah. out to them. I wanna add something to that, Brian. I think what they should do, because you know what most, what happens they've done some work in the database, right? At some point they did something. So what I would suggest in addition to what you're saying is first go in there and see who did I say was hot at some point, right? Start with the pointy edge of the spear, right? Who did I think was ready to do something at some point or close to it and work backwards, right? To the fat part, um, go ahead. Yeah, and here's another thing, don't prejudge your lead because you've probably already prejudged it and you made a conclusion about it. But here's the thing, a lead that's six months old is not the same quality as it was six months ago. And, and that can be good and bad. Six months ago, they might've been ready to buy a house and they went and bought one. So you screwed that up, sorry. Or six months ago, which is, uh, that's, that's actually a worst case scenario. Best realistic scenario though is six months ago, they came in and they weren't ready. They were, you know, oh. a pay-per-click lead. And, and now they they're ready. Now they're waiting for your call. They're like, where is Brian? Where is Brian's agent? Why hasn't he called me? Right. And you know, and, and if you look in there and says, this guy called me an asshole, guess what? Six months ago, they don't remember. Call him again. No. Yeah. Don't be afraid of that. So step one. Now you'll be ready for it. Now you'll be ready if they call you an asshole, right? <laughs> so and you. if you want to do something fun, I'm going to take it aside. Do do call night bingo. You know, one of the things, the goal is one of the boxes is to get called an asshole. And hey, you won. Nice. And kind of like a fun that. thing to do. We'll go into that in a different call. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, have some fun with it. You know, if I get hung up on at least once a day and called an asshole at least once a day, then I'm doing really doing my job. That's Please, really not call, night, call night bingo. That has nothing to do with like Naked Twister. This is close. It's a different call. Naked Twister requires some alcohol. And, you know, I'm not sure we're promoting that on this I'm call. Just, I'm just checking. Just checking. Now, if somebody hits on the bingo thing, right, if you get called an asshole, do you have to get that recorded or do you just, is this like honor system? Uh, honor system. I mean, come on, you know, let's, let's, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to, to, you know, have proof that someone got called, called an asshole, but to that point, um, we do record all of our phone calls for outgoing. So if we really had to do it, we could go back and listen. If you have to review the tapes to make sure that nobody's cheating at call night bingo. Absolutely. But call it bingo is a fun thing because, you know, if you're focusing, you're changing your focus. And if, if you're, if you're on a team and you've never done this, it's a lot of fun. It's just, you know, obviously one of the things is going to be to set an appointment, make a phone call. So everyone's going to get some basic ones, but you know, there's some really fun things that happen and you know what? It's fun. And, and if you get hung up on all of a sudden you get to yell bingo instead of, well, that really sucked. And it's just about changing. Your perspective on, on doing stuff like that so but anyway, back to the database step yeah. one don't prejudge it you know because yeah. you don't have any idea this person who you haven't spoke to in 6 12 18 months where they're at who yeah. knows you know the last time you talked to them they got in a fight with their spouse and their kid got kicked out of school and they were having a bad day well today they just got a raise and everything's great I don't have any idea but number one don't prejudge yeah so sure. number two reach out to them you know, go through these people, reach out to them, and you're going to reach out to them every day for a week. Every, and, you know, even though you haven't had a con conversation with them, reach out to them every day for a week, and then hopefully we'll have some conversations with them. We can recategorize them. We can put tags on them, whether those tags are buyer, seller, hot lead, cold lead, you know, all the different tags that you can use. But you at know the what? end, I think, Brian, we're going to have to go into that, right? We're going to have to. So you're, you're talking about cleanup. I think we're going to have to, I want to talk about a lead process, right? And then I think we need to talk about tagging and just us give recommendations on like what the tagging should be, but go ahead and finish your thought for the cleanup. Yeah, my thought is after you're done, have a tag because 
here's what I want every single person on my team to do. We have a pond. So if I go into that pond and you've called that lead, I want to be able to know what happened. If you were to, you know, quit our team tomorrow, and I don't, obviously I don't want that, anybody should be able to go into that lead and go, oh, this guy wants to buy a house and he wants to buy it in Bentonville, Arkansas. He wants a three-bedroom, two-bath, under $200,000, and he wants to buy sometime before August. That is good notes. And notes – and is really what is going to make our, our database good. And then tags, you know, so nurture. And so do you, do you want to cover tags or where, where would you want to go with that, Dale? Um, let's talk about tags because then we can talk about the, the lead process, right? So are we, are we done with the cleanup though? So cleanup, right, is you go in there. I said, start with the pointy end of the spear, find anything that you thought was hot, work your way backwards from there. And what you said was block, chunk it down, right? So Take however many you have, chunk it down into, into pieces and just work through that block and, and do it, right? Keep doing it over and over again. Listen, I've let a database get out of, let databases get out of control before. If we, I, I, yeah, right. And uh, I, have a sh I have a bit of a, a show going on right now with one of my uh, lead sources, right? <laughs> that I actually need to clean up. So it happens to the best of us. But chunk it down and work on it, right? That's what you said. Anything else, any other tips for, getting over, like, what about them just actually like being afraid of cracking that thing open and seeing what sort of a mess they have? Well, here's the thing. I mean, if we don't, we got to start somewhere. At the end of the day, here's the thing I'd like to, re to, to remind everybody about. Assume that every lead in your database costs 50 bucks. And, and that may not be a true statement. You can use $25, use whatever you want. But if you're afraid to crack your database open, get an idea of what you paid for your leads. Yeah. So for me, let's just say that I, that I paid $25 a lead. And when I do some quick math on my, on my handy dandy calculator here. So if I have $42,000 or 42,000 leads and I paid $25 a piece for them, I've paid a million and fifty dollars for my database. Yeah. Now, that's a lot. So and again, I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate, but I can promise you if I've got an asset worth a million dollars, I'm much more motivated to open it. You know, you only have 500 leads, but that's fine. Right. Who cares? You've still, yeah. you've still paid a bunch of money for it and you have two choices. You, well, three, you can go buy new leads, ignore your database. You could work your database or you can fall where I fall, which is both and yeah. say, I'm going to buy new leads, but I'm also going to keep working this database because, you know, 500 times 25, you know, I spent 12 grand on that. And yeah. unless you have an extra 12 grand that you're not using, send it my way. I'll set up a GoFundMe. But right. you know, unless you got a whole bunch of extra money, there, it's there yeah. you know, for it. And by yeah. the way, I guarantee you there's good deals. Uh, oh, absolutely. That, that's my next point, which is, you know, the people that are afraid to crack into their database – they have a tendency to be perfectionists, right? They're worried about getting it all right. How in the hell am I gonna clean that whole thing up? Well, guess what? Don't look at it that way, right? We're coming on Easter right now, so I want you to look at it like an Easter egg hunt. I want you to pretend that somebody hid a couple of Easter eggs in your database that each contain about $5,000, right? And you gotta find that Easter egg. Now, when you go on an Easter egg hunt, is do you have to collect all the eggs or can you show up and get a couple of eggs and you're still one something, right? Absolutely. You can get a couple of eggs. So just go out there. You don't have to get all the eggs. You don't have to perfect it. You don't have to clean up the whole database. Go and look for one commission check, right? And if you find one, see if you can find another commission check and stop when you're done, when, you, when you're out of time looking for commission checks. That's what I want you to do. I love it. And that's, that's what it's really all about. You're, you're, you're hunting, you're, you're just going through this, this set of information. Let's talk about some of the things that are going to frustrate you as you go through it. I mean, for me, <laughs> the most frustrating thing when I go through my database is I bought a house yesterday. I bought oh. a house last week. I bought a house last month, but a couple of things that from perspective that I really want people to get a conversation with somebody that says go to hell is better than a non-conversation. And the reason is I don't have to call that guy or at least not for another six months. Yeah. So if someone says, never call me again. I bought a house last week. I've got a realtor, any of those categories. Great. Because here's the thing in a database that has 500 people in it, unless you're going to sit down and call every single one of those people every single week, then 
you're just going to have to narrow it down to a, a workable group of people. And that's really what we're talking about here today yeah. is getting it to the point where if you're making 20, 30, 40, 50, a hundred phone calls a day, that they're worth your time instead of calling people who aren't interested. The only way to do that, unfortunately, is constantly work on your database. Yeah. So, so uh, actually let me talk about the lead flow first. So here's, here's the way that we promote people working with their databases. And obviously, you know, as, as you and I both are in coaching, right? We have to coach people that work in multiple systems and they work across different platforms. So what we have to be able to teach is uh, a, a concept. We have to be able to teach principles about how to manage your database and not necessarily exactly how each database works. Exactly. So I call it the lead, uh, the lead assembly line, right? So lead comes in day one. It's all based on time. How long have they been in your system and have they talked to you or not, right? And this is regardless of what the source is. So obviously in tagging, right? We want to know what our sources are if we can, but at its most basic, it's really based on time and whether somebody has talked to you or not. So a new lead comes in day one, that's brand new. And then from, they're going to go from new lead is always day one. Once they hit day two, we call that recent, right? So then they're going to go into the recent pile. And they're going to be in there from day two to say day seven or whatever your days of pain are that you run, right? Brian, what kind of days of pain do you run? What's your 14? 14? Mm -hmm. You know what? You should appreciate the fact that you're not in Brian's market in Arkansas because you're up against some stiff competition if they're going to hammer these people for 14 days and you're not, right? So that sets the standard. Absolutely. 14 is a good number and then we throw them in the pond. Yeah. So good. So recents, and then you go into the, they go into the pond. I call it the cold pile. Same thing, right? So that Brian for you, is it the same? It's somebody who hasn't responded to anything in your day one or your days of pain, your 14 days that goes into the pond, right? Absolutely. So, cause in my team, um, you're not allowed to have more than 200 people assigned to you. So the idea is a, it's a very simple one. And, and anyone out there who's listening, if you can get your database to this point on, on the buy side and, and sell side, it would be similar. But if you have 200 people that told you they want to buy or sell a house in the next 12 months, you should have a pretty good year. And that's where we're at constantly trying to get to the point where every single person in my database falls into one of two categories. One, they're new. So in that first 14 days of pain or two, they told me that they want to buy or sell a house in the next 12 months. And if you have that, if that's what your main group that you're focusing on all the time works, even if you only have a 30% success rate, that means you sold about 70 houses. Absolutely. So listen, team leaders or agents, this is a good tip to have, right? So this is about lead scoring. So if you have, what Brian just said is if you have these people in your hot pile or your nurture pile, right, that you've pulled that, that they're not in the general population, that they're good for you, you should be closing X number of homes from that pile of leads that you have. And, you know, you're talking about teams and individuals can take this as their own principles too, right? That they can pare those things down, you know, because that's one of the questions that you have. It's like, how do I know who to keep? How do I know who to throw into the pond or just sort of let go fallow off to the side over there, right? Um, and that would be just have a, a, a set maximum number that you can keep that are supposed to be hot and your nurtures and you're constantly swapping them out, right? you should be having your follow-up calls with them based on when you guys talked about having a follow-up and you should be able to swap them out to make sure that you have a hot nurture pile going on. Um, yeah, we call it top grading. We're, we're constantly top grading. If a new guy comes in and I got to put him into my 200, that means I got to kick somebody out. Right. And, so, so you find the bum who doesn't answer your calls and doesn't open your emails after, you know, uh, for the last couple of weeks and you throw them out. Exactly. Not out you put them over into the pond, which ideally, I, I'm, prob I'm pretty sure your pond probably works the same way. There is automated messaging, automated yes. texts, automated emails, right? The system is incubating that pond. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, cause here's what, it, it, for all those people who have been a real estate agent, you know, not in the last five years, if you've been a real estate agent for more than five years, this is in essence how we used to do real estate. Remember when we got five leads a month, Dale? I do. And right. I, I, 
By the way, when mind. internet leads, internet leads were like gold. Like yeah. if somebody came from the internet, they legitimately wanted to buy a house for a lot of money and they were going to work with you to do it. Exactly. And you know, there was some, there was, there was some things that were significantly easier about that, but I'll tell you what we did better in 2005 when I started than we do in 2019. The thing that we do better is we treat anybody who we had a, con a real estate conversation with in 2005, like they were a gift from God. Nowadays, if they don't say they want to buy a house in the next, next seven seconds, we think they're trash. And I understand if you look at statistically, it's only about 10% of the internet leads that were generated in 2018 that actually turned into real estate transactions. So we do have to understand that it's, yeah, it, theoretically the leads were higher quality back then because, because not everybody and their dog became a lead. Right. But maybe we find a happy medium to, between these are all shit and these are all amazing <laughs> and get the reality that these are people who are having real estate conversations with, I'm not saying you become their best friend, but I'm saying you become, you become their ally that you become, there's someone who, when you, when they call when you call them, they're like, Hey, it's Brian. It's good to talk to him. He's always fun to talk to. And you know what? There's going to be people who are great leads who you're not going to resonate with. Great. Throw them in the pond because you got more to come, more coming in. That's Absolutely. one of the top grading's about. It's not just about, they said they want to buy a house, but they, they said they want to buy a house and we have some good rapport and they're not irritated to talk to me. And this is something I said to my team the other day. And I think it's something that's really, really important to think about is what is the way that you get to fire somebody? The way that you get to fire somebody is if you have too much business. How do you get too much business? You keep making phone calls. So, you know, it's, if you don't want to deal with that guy who calls you every night at 10 o'clock at night, fire him, but you can't fire him until you got two more good people to replace him. So that's what this is all about. And you refer him, you refer him to the member of your team who isn't making their calls. That's what you do. That's a, that's a fabulous idea. Yeah. You know, ours just basically end up back in the pond, but uh, I actually really like that idea. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, I mean, I preach and teach and coach that every single person, all the leads are real. Like when they're attached to a name and a phone number, it's a real person. Just because like you said, if they're not ready to do what you're, what you want them to do right now, that doesn't mean that they aren't going to do something eventually in the future. So with the database management, cash management, managing the cash register, you let that automated system work your pond, work your cold leads for you. And I think that's you know probably something we need to cover. Um, well, let's talk about this real quick before we go into the automation piece. But you know what you do is bring them back up, right? So you're working through your leads. Let's say that you don't have a lot going on right now, right? You don't have a lot of new leads coming in. You don't have a lot of nurtures that you need to follow up with. Every I, I you know every two to three months you're gonna want to go into that cold pile and dredge up the oldest stuff that you can find and try to work that again. Because once you've let, once you've stopped calling them as often, they forget to ignore your call, right? So now you bring them back up and you reach out to the, them again to see if you can re-engage them. And I'm sure you'll notice, you've noticed probably, you ha you'll end up with people popping out of the pond, out of the cold pile as a result of your automated messaging that's gonna be a nice little surprise for your little bonus, right? Yes. So a couple of things about a pond, if you've got one, um, <laughs> make sure your pond isn't called the pond if it's sending out emails. I made that mistake, by the way. I named, basically my pond is an account in follow-up boss that's, a, as far as anybody knows, it's a human being. Well, I put in the automation and people kept getting emails from the pond. That's not a good idea. So don't do that. Yeah. So with a name that makes sense, you can either use like for right now, we're using Curtis Realty Group. So that's basically the signature line or come up with something, you know, you can be Bob Smith. You know, it, it do, you don't necessarily have to have a, a specific name for that. But, you know, understand when your pond's going to be doing stuff or your pool, whatever you want to call it, make sure that that makes sense because that's a mistake that I made. Absolutely. Okay. So we talked about the lead assembly line, right? Uh, and now let's talk about tagging. Let's just make it super simple for people, right? Brian, what are some of the basic tags that they have to have in their database in order to keep things sorted out? We use, we use lead. So you, you ask basically what is, a, what is a person who comes in today? For the first 14 days until I have a conversation with you, you're, you're just a lead. 
and that's and that's it. If after we have start having conversations with you, that's when you become something else. So nurture, that's someone who's planning on buying in the next 18 months. Buyer, that's someone who we're actively working with. Uh, seller, that's someone who we're actually actively working with. Past clients, sphere. Those are the basic ones that we use. We also have some other ones which are just, you know, realtor has yeah. another realtor. That way we can know that they're how we treat those people differently. So someone who has another realtor or by the way, says they have another realtor because just because they say they have another realtor doesn't mean I stop marketing to them. No. Uh, I'm and gonna respond. You know what? In, in future episodes, Brian, we're gonna do dialogues around I have an agent so that Excellent. we can help people fix that problem. So that you lab coat people out there, if you listen to Brian and I and you do what we say, you will not be the one that we poach the clients from, right? So you'll be the one getting the clients because you can serve them at a much higher level. So you're going to want to check that out in the future. Absolutely. So, you know, those are the basic ones we use. I mean, we have a couple others, but if you just have those, the, those are the things that are working. You know, we do have no longer looking and we do have trash. Those are the other, other ones that we have. So, but ultimately it's buyer, seller, lead, hot prospect, closed, sphere, past client. Those are the ones that really, really, really matter to us. Yep. And, you know, the, what tags are about to me is the ability to sort things. And that's really all it is because a database is ultimately a pile of people. If you think about it, it's just all we're trying to do with that pile is, is straighten it out. And that's yep. what the tags are doing for is just is straighten out your pile. Exactly. So we have those tags that we just talked about, which are really, it's a, uh, who are you, right? And are you in process with us or not, right? Because if you're a buyer or seller, you're currently in process, right? If not, you're a lead or you're a nurture uh, or you're dead, right? Or you've gone through the process with us uh, and you're a past client. Uh, we also have a sphere in there, which is just, hey, I know you. We may or may not have done business together. So those are, those are like the very first key tags that you absolutely have to have for somebody. And then we um, give time frame tags or some kind of timing, right? whether it's hot, cold, warm, or it's 30 to 60 days, 90 to uh, 180, or you know, one year plus, some kind of timing tag that you wanna have in the system for, and this is primarily for your nurtures, right? So this is how you take your nurtures and you really understand what their timing is. And when, and then obviously using notes or tasks, right? Uh, in addition to your tagging, using the notes and the tasks, should tell you when you need to be uh, communicating with somebody. Um, one of the points that I wanna make about this, one of the difficulties that people have with managing their CRM or managing their database is they often look at it as an administrative task. It's like taking out the trash, right? Like my wife re requires me to take the trash out and I take the trash out, but there's no reward for me for doing that. It sucks and I don't like doing it and I have to keep doing it over and over again. I don't get anything out of it, right? That's what people look at managing their CRMs like. It's like, oh man, I'm trying to sell houses and then I have to go and do this thing over here with the stupid technology and make tags and stuff, right? It's like this art project they don't wanna deal with. So the problem is, is because they haven't actually used it proactively, right, Brian? So agents that use it proactively, teams that use it proactively, you've already set this thing up and it tells you exactly what to do. It tells you who to talk to. It tells you when to talk to them, right? If you can just get to that point, it's kind of a uphill battle, but once you get there, it's all downhill and the system just tells you exactly what to do and who to talk to. And then there's no mystery to it. So yeah. that's the tasking in the notes. So let's talk about that because I think this is something that people miss. If you talk to any agent out there who's trying to be a good agent, who's received any type of coaching, they're probably going to have a time block for lead generation. Is that a fair assessment, wouldn't you say, Dale? Well, um, about 70% of the ones who are told to do it have that. Okay, but at least they're aware whether they're doing it or not. You know, that's, that's a different call. And, you they're know, like, what, yeah. oh, it's on my schedule, but I didn't do it. Uh, okay. Right. You know, hot pokers and different things like that. But anyway, so here's what doesn't often go on people's schedule. So for me, if I'm lead generating from eight to 10, from 7.45 to eight o'clock, it's lead, it's uh, list preparation. It's, I'm going to sit down for 15 minutes and make the list. Here's the thing that, that doesn't happen. Even if you do that 99% of the time is at 10 o'clock, 
I need to spend another 15 minutes making sure I did good with all the people I did today. Okay. Because here's the, here's what we do. We get excited. We call the people. Good things happen. We're sending emails. We're setting up appointments. We had a great day. And, and then it's time for happy hour because you're woo! so excited. But we miss that there's, you know, we called 50 people and we spoke to 10, but we didn't make follow-up tasks for all for it. So my thought is this after your lead generation time, you need at least a 15 minute, if not a 30 minute block, and you'll get better and more efficient at it after time to make sure two things, every single lead should either be dead or have a follow-up. There shouldn't be any choices there besides that. They should have some sort of follow-up task or be dead. Let me clarify that. This is what I, this is what I teach. I mean, I'll give my, my opinion on this. Please. Because what I've seen with high volume lead, uh, lead, the teams that run high volumes of leads, right? And especially I say teams, is they can get bloated on tasking and then it explodes the system and nobody does anything, right? Yep. So when I talk about the lead assembly line, right? You do not need a task for a new lead day one, right? A new lead is your hair on fire. If your hair's on fire, do I need to task you to put it out? No, I don't. You know to put that out, right? Okay, yeah. we don't need a task. Now, the, the recent, right, day two through I promote day seven, or day, let's talk day 14 according to Brian. I don't think you need a task for day two to day 14 because they should have a tag on them that says recent, which means every single day you must contact all of these people in this bucket, right? Absolutely. You have to do that. And then after day 14, they fall into the cold pile and I don't need tasking in the cold pile. So I think we need tasking for uh, really just our nurtures, right? Absolutely. Or the people that we're almost going to get an appointment with. Those people where it's, you just couldn't quite get it, right? But you're going to call them tomorrow or a couple days and you think you can get it. Uh, that and our nurtures. Like I think that's really all you need the tasking for. Absolutely. And, and here's a, a way that I do this differently than the majority of people. I use follow up boss, right? All the people out there using follow up boss. This is a, something that I created myself. Someone else might have told me, and I'm not aware of it, but I actually use tags for follow ups. And what I mean by that is if I had a conversation with Dale today and he said, Hey, Brian, you know, call me back in a month, or maybe he said, Hey, I'm six months out. In my mind, I say, I call everybody who's six months out once a month. I'm just going to put a very simple tag in my, in my CRM that says 042719. What does that tag mean? Well, on, on, on that day, I go into my database and I sort everybody who's got that tag. And I know that every single person who has that tag, I have to call that day. So because, to your point, I hate tasks because what happens with tasks is once I get to about 30 or 40 of them, I give up because right. it's overwhelming <laughs> and all I look at is and go, I've just created another shit show and this really doesn't matter. So yeah, let, me, let me answer this question that we, and that makes a lot of sense, Brian. I'm going to answer this question from Diane Hicks. What about if you have a list from a school database of parents? Uh, now, I don't know whether you were given that list or whether you just <laughs> want to randomly prospect, Right. Uh, can I'd love for Diane to clarify that, but um, I, I'm assuming maybe she's asking about tags. Is uh, I'm not sure if that's the one. Brian, why don't you take this? If you sure. have a list of of school parents, there's two things I would do with this list. First of all, I would tag them in a way that made sense. So I might be, you know. School parents it might be very simple. By the way, don't get complex with your tags that go outside the norm. So any person who reads and says school parents is gonna know what that tag means. So, you know, do that. That would be the first thing I would do with it. Create that list. Here's another thing that I would do if I had that list and this really isn't about this call, but I would create a program for them. And I'm not sure exactly what that program would be. It might be that I have every person who's on this list that I'm gonna call them and say, hey, Dale, this is Brian. Uh, you're, you, know, you go to school with my kid and it's pretty awesome that we have an uh, opportunity to work together or get to know each other. I'm a real estate agent we are offering a special opportunity for every single person who's in our kid's school, whatever it is. What is it? Maybe I'll give them a free appraisal. Maybe I'm giving them a free home warranty. Maybe I'll, I don't know, but I'm going to come up with some program. And by the way, a legit one, don't come up with, I'm going to treat you special because <laughs> I mean, be legitimate about it and say, look, you know, I, my kid goes to school with you and I'd love to do, get to know you, have some business with you. So, you know, we offer every single person who goes to kid school with us. We offer them a free home, home warranty if they buy a house with us, something along that lines, because now I've created a script. 
Absolutely. And Brian, I think I might even dial the obviousness back just even one more touch and just say, hey, it's the spring market. And I'm reaching out to all the uh, parents uh, that uh, that go to my kids' school. And I wanted to offer you just a, a quick um, valuation of your property, right? Because we all live in the same neighborhood. And I'm finding that a lot of the parents are curious about, you know, where the market's at for their home. And I'd love to send you one, right? And then you could also add in, if they sound interested, you could also add in or close out with, hey, we're all, we also, by the way, offer a free home warranty. And we have these other things that are like X amount of dollars in value. Yeah. And, and you know, you'll hear me over the next X number of months talk a lot about USPs. USPs are a big deal for me. And USPs are a big deal for me because I want to be different than everybody else. Because, you know, when I started in real estate in 2005, once you put somebody in your car, the chance of them talking to another realtor was maybe 5%. It was very limited. Wow. Nowadays, if you're not assuming that you're talking to at least five to seven other realtors, you've really missed the boat. So, yeah. you know, we find ways to become unique. Um, so I hope that answers, our, answers that question. But uh, yeah, Hopefully. I think it's a great way to handle that. Hopefully, yeah. And you know what, Diane Hicks? Just message us in. If you if we didn't get that question answered, you can message Brian or myself, and uh, we'd love to answer that question for you. But I think that kind of wraps up our database stuff for today. Uh, Brian, what do you think? I think in the next couple of episodes, maybe we should be doing some dialogues and uh, you know talking about what we're actually saying to these people when when people are talking to them, how we convert this stuff. Yeah, I think we've gotten past some of the, the basic setup stuff. And, you know, and for all of you guys who are watching this, the reason that we did it this way is I feel like the majority of people skip to the fun stuff, skip to the meat and potatoes, but we're trying to build a base. And, and so, yeah, I think next time we'll definitely want to start talking some dialogues. I'm not sure, you know, maybe we'll do, uh, maybe we'll do portal leads. Maybe we'll do pay-per-click leads. Maybe we'll do Facebook leads, but definitely let's start talking about some of that how, stuff. So that how people- about this? comment on the live below. Tell us what you need the most help with. Tell us what dialogues you need the most. What leads are you struggling with the most? What objections are you struggling with the most? And what do you want to know how to handle? Okay, so comment that below. And uh, the best one wins a, uh, I don't know, a funky t-shirt or something. Awesome. All right. Good to see you, Brian. Thank you so much. And we'll, we'll be back next week, guys. All right. Thanks, Dale.